even if it were schedule three, I, that doesn't change for me right now. What it does change on the research side of things is potentially expanding opportunities for um, development of those drugs. So as Emily alluded to, there have already been changes in terms of the um, farms and um, facilities that can grow and source cannabis for research purposes. So um, that has happened on paper in terms of how many new sources of cannabis for research are truly accessible um, for investigators. It's still pretty limited. And if it were Schedule 3, that may expand because what it really changes is a lot of the rules and regulations around the storage and transportation of those products. The other thing that would be different for us, you know, right now with it being Schedule 1, we can't dispense that product to our participants through the standard research pharmacy that most other clinical trials use. We have to have a dedicated pharmacist for our Schedule 1 studies. And as Emily said, this crazy Schedule 1 um, uh, secure facility to store those products, if it were Schedule 3, that becomes a lot less burdensome for places that don't, institutions that don't already have all of that security in place. Um, they no longer need it. They can use the same protocols that they would use for other studies of Schedule Two or Schedule Three or other scheduled drugs um, to store and dispense their study drug. So that would definitely simplify um, both, like from an infrastructure level as well as a staffing level, uh, the ability to do those studies.